on two. One, two, three, kit. Is this frequency in use? Whiskey 7, Mexico, Sierra. Morning, Mike. How's it going? Oh, that's good. The other gentlemen have cleared off and QS wide, so decided to uh, tune up, but uh, doing well. Looks like another uh, Indian summer day. I think we're going to cool off in a few days into the 70s, but it's been a very good time of year, W7MS. Yeah, I think we got a couple of days of 89 degree weather, at least over here anyway. Uh, I think here in a couple, two, three days or so. Oh yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's nice to enjoy being maybe overly warm because soon we'll be complaining about the cold weather. Yeah, I guess you can't ever. I guess humans can never be happy. I think humans are inherently happy when they're sad. Well, it's the community and communal effect of negativity. Uh, but of course, we don't find that here on 3974 on AM. And of course, I'm running carrier and upper sideband this morning, so uh, thank you for letting me in. Well, you sound uh, you sound really good. You sound like you're on something interesting again. So, uh, but I'll I'll wait until uh, I'll wait until uh, the net control starts here, and uh, uh, when we all name our uh, our uh, stations. But uh, anyway, uh, Carl is going to be net control this morning. So uh, anyway. Uh, yeah, Mike, get your coffee or whatever, and uh, I'm going to go in and get something to drink, and uh, I'll be back here in just a minute. Uh, W7MSK0DWC. Okay, Chuck, and uh, good morning to Carla. Yeah, I wasn't sure how to drink, and there's uh, been a bit trap up in your rotation, but I guess Henry's getting the day off, so congratulations to uh, W7RBS. So, we'll be listening, W7MS. with the Vintage Military Radio Net looking for early check-ins before I get going here. I already have two, Mike and Chuck. Uh, is there any others that would like to check in? Come now. WA7YBS. Okay, good morning, Henry. I got you in the number three spot. Uh, is there anybody else out there who would like to be an early check-in? Please come now. get started, uh, there's going to be some uh, interlopers. Okay, thanks for that, Henry. Um, QST, 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 this is the Vintage Radio, Military Radio Net. This is Whiskey 4 Delta Victor Quebec. My name is Carla. And I will be your net control this morning. We'll be operating on 3974 KC. The military, the vintage military radio net is a round table AM net that provides an opportunity for hams to
to operate their military vintage gear on the air. Uh, military gear is encouraged, but certainly not required. Check-ins will be given a number that can be used in the handoff. Um, I, I will call for check-ins at the end of each round session, so uh, if you don't make the first one, don't feel bad. You, you've got plenty of other time. So I'm going to go ahead and get it going. And so far in the number one spot, I have... Mike, W7, Mexico Sierra. In the number two spot, I have Chuck, K0, DWC. In number three spot, I have Henry, WA7, YBS. So with that, guys, uh, let me make a call out. See if there's somebody out there would like to be number four. Please come now. Uh, I'll throw my hat in there, W6MQI. Uh, Chuck, this is Mike, Mike W6MQI. Well, good morning, Dave, W6MQI. Got you in the number four spot. Is there anybody else out there would like to check in and be number five? Please come now. Okay, um, I'll go ahead and give my equipment rundown. I'm on the, uh, the transmitter is the ART-13, and the receiver is the R-274 with a D-104 mic. And I'm running about 300 watts. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Mike down there in Reno. W7MS, this is Whiskey Ford, Delta Victor, Quebec. Well, thank you, Carla. W4MA2 and the uh, Nevada military net, W7MS, uh, Mike and Reno. Well, good reception from all little slim pickings uh, at the moment, but again, good morning to you, uh, again to Chuck and, of course, to Carla Henry, who has the day off, and uh, over to Dave. Glad, uh, glad to hear everybody uh, this morning. This morning running uh, carrier and upper sideband, and that must mean, yes, it's something new and so relatively new from the 1980s and so on. See, that's the uh, rack of uh, Collins HF-80 equipment, this specific stuff, not to get into model number nomenclature, but is the four-channel ISB uh, set up with a solid-state one-kilowatt amplifier, pre-post selector, that was uh, standard equipment for the uh, TSC-60 version 5 communication system. You know, obviously I don't have the, uh, <laughs> I don't have the other accoutrements, which might, might include a communications uh, band, but uh, that's the setup here. And uh, we'll keep it rolling over to Chuck, uh, K0DWC, W7MS. Okay, Mike. Yeah, I knew you were running something kind of different, uh, but you sound fantastic on that uh, Collins rig there. Uh, pretty cool. What, how long, uh, I wonder how long you've had that one. I, I don't remember you ever, at least I can't remember you having that on before. I guess it might be something new for you, but I don't know, maybe not. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I'm running the same uh, same station Carl is, ART-13. Uh, running uh, two receivers. I'm running the uh, ARR7. She's running the R274, like she stated. But uh, got 300 watts inverted D antenna, D104 microphone. Uh, cheating with an LS3 speaker. So uh, that's my equipment rundown, and uh, I will send it over on the outside of Route 50 to Henry WA7YBS. Zero DWC. Santa good, Henry. Well, okay. And uh, this is WA7YBS, and we're just trying to get our monitor scope here working. Yeah, okay. And uh, yeah, so a leader, a leader 
LSO 505, one of those really high class scopes. And uh, but at least I can see it, which is uh, more than I can say for the other one, which is way across the room. And uh, so anyway, yeah, good morning to all. Carl, Mike, Chuck, and Dave. Good signals. And you know, uh, when I first powered up everything, uh, the QRN was uh, non-existent. And about five, oh, five or ten minutes after seven, it started up. So I don't know. Solar activity, I hope. We'll see as uh, as fall progresses. And uh, so anyway, let's see, it was 47 this morning, and it was 90, God, what was it, 94, or something like that yesterday? Unbelievable. But anyway, uh, it's just uh, the way things go around here. It wasn't even a record. So uh, anyway, let's see, we're on, uh, I don't, I, it's like an ART-13 roundup today. I'm also on an ART-13. This is the uh, the Sama the Sama Survivor. This is the uh, the ART 13A. And it started out as a basket case, and well, you guys all know the story. And uh, it got put together, and it's it's, it's had its share of uh, ups and downs. I think both of the uh, relays. The phone relay and the CW relay both have been replaced over the course of using this for the last 10 years or so. So uh, anyway, uh, but a, a good transmitter nonetheless. Had to replace the capacitors and the audio module also, but that was like one of the first things I had to do. Anyway, uh, the receiver that we uh, wrote in about 130 watts, 125, 130 watts, something like that, to the collinear array. Antenna. And uh, let's see, the uh, receiver is the H National HR07 black wrinkle finish table model, quite an unusual original uh, color scheme that was, uh, I don't know, I don't know the history of it. I know there's a, a few of these around. There's one on uh, radiomuseum.org, and uh, so I do know that National did produce these, but I don't know what's wrong could have been for anything, who knows. But at any rate, it's an H07 under the black wrinkle finish. Uh, with that, let's turn it over to Dave. W6MQI, WA7YBS. WA7YBS, W6MQI. Good morning, Henry and uh, Carla. Thanks for herding the herd. Good morning, and uh, Mike. Chuck, My signals are sounding really good here today in Livermore, and I'm going to have to break the uh, ART-13 chain here. I'm on my Kenwood again, driving the uh, 10 tech amp. So the only military connection I can come up with here is the green uh, military issue coax I have on my patch panel. So that's, that's about all I can. Uh, it's all about all I can muster here for military. Other than that, 57 degrees here, overcast, and uh, we have some probably maybe one of the last hurrahs of warm weather this week coming 102, 103 towards the end of the week. That's fine with me. I kind of prefer the colder weather. Makes it not easier to work in and stuff, but uh, I know some people don't like that, but I prefer it. Um, so I guess that's it. Send her up to Carla. W4DVQ, W6MQI. Okay, W6MQI, this is Whiskey Ford, Delta Victor, Quebec. Very good. Um, is there anybody out there would like to be number five and get in on the tail end of the first go-around? Please come now. Okay, nothing heard, so... Uh, 
Well, <clears throat> I'm not awake yet this morning, guys. Uh, so, uh, not a whole lot going on for me. Um, just work. And, uh, I don't know. I, I shouldn't even be up, but I am. I am. I couldn't... I couldn't let you down, I guess. But, um, okay, since, uh, since we don't have, I don't know where everybody is. So, uh, maybe I scared them off. So with that, I'm going to hand it up to Mike. W7MS, this is Whiskey Ford, Delta Victor, Quebec. Go ahead, Mike. Well, thanks, Carla, W7MS. Well, uh, to answer Chuck's question, no, I've had this for probably I, at least 20 years, uh, maybe upwards to 25, with the exception of the pre-post selector, which, uh, yeah, actually I had that for the same period of time, but I finally found the military circular connector maybe five, six years ago to put that online, because everybody needs a free, pre and uh, post uh, bandpass filter on their uh, on their setup. But that's uh, that's the, the setup here. Uh, 250 watts a carrier, and uh, I think one of the reasons this works fairly well on AM is because, uh, unlike uh, most Collins gear and the other HF80 equipment, this guy uses uh, crystal filters because it was primarily used for data transmission in a four-channel ISP configuration. So it has. Uh, excellent uh, distortion characteristics and a wider band pass than the uh, than the traditional mechanical filter. So it works. Uh, it's fairly respectable on uh, on AM. Even though when it was uh, during its brief career when I was nervous in the service, that was not the uh, anticipated uh, mode of operation. And just a little bit more on this was the fact that it, it entered. Uh, the uh, the Department of Defense. Uh, then the Cold War ended, and then suddenly uh, the stuff was surplused out like other equipment because the evil empire was finished. Uh, uh, not, but uh, so a lot of this basically went out on the block. Uh, maybe still with the uh, the factory uh, inspection tags and uh, virtually new, even if it was used. Maybe a little rack rash, but uh, it shows the uh, the uh, the optimism that was taking place uh, in the uh, in the 19, late 1980s uh, through the 1990s. Uh, <laughs> excuse me. Uh, I got choked up. Uh, yeah, another thing to comment on was uh, I finally did it, uh, commenting on the stuff that I couldn't even give away at swap meets. Well, uh, I, 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 and I have no angst here, but the HQ-129X went to the landfill Wednesday, along with the Brenning 12. Uh, more to come. Because if you can't give it away, and I don't want it, uh, I'm past the guilt feeling of uh, trying to retain history. Uh, so, actually, I'm very proud of myself. Uh, the Hammerland and the Brenning went to the dump. So, over to Chuck, uh, k 0 dwc w 7 ms <laughs> okay, Mikey. <laughs> oh man, that's that's kind of funny. You know, if you can't sell it and you don't want it, dump it. <laughs> oh well, you know what? It makes a lot of sense. I mean, what are you gonna do if it's if it's in your way? It's in your way, and if you don't want it and you can't sell it, what else are you gonna do? <laughs> it makes total sense to me. But uh, anyway, hey, uh, thanks for the on that, uh, what is the HF-80 Collins there, that's, uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, the evil empire. Yeah, and it's still the evil empire. <laughs> oh, man. Well, anyway, um, as Carla stated, not a whole lot going on here. Uh, at least radio-wise, anyway. Doing some stuff outside, you know, while the weather's still good. But, uh, Nothing to beat the drum about real hard. So uh, anyway, uh, conditions seem pretty good. Uh, Mike, your your audio sounds great. Henry sounds fantastic, and and Dave, you're coming in. You've got great audio on that Kenwood too. So uh, I, I can't remember what model Kenwood it was you had on there. 
but uh, I'm sure you'll say something to me anyway. But anyway, uh, I will send it over to Henry, WA7YBS. Henry, you sound good on that, I think it was the, I think he called it the Fuja, the Fuja, the uh, uh, Sama Fugitive before, I think. <laughs> WA7YBS. K0DWC. Go ahead, Henry. Okay. Uh, K0DWC WA7YBS. Well, yeah, being a fugitive assumes that it got away, or implies that it got away, and it really didn't. Sama had their hands all over this guy, so, uh, you know, and then it was essentially parted, well, not parted out, but, uh, you know, some of that bus wire. Uh, this it uh, connecting uh, a few of the, uh, a few of the things in there uh, was cut. I don't know. I really don't know why. It's just like they cut it because it was there. Uh, I think it's 12 gauge bus wire. Anyway, I had to make uh, several uh, tubular splices on that to uh, uh, get it all back together. But anyway, yeah, no, it, 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 I used to call it the fugitive, but then I got to thinking about that, and that implied that it got away, and it it, it really didn't. The salmon, you know, they uh, they even had a wiring error. Uh, when salmon had it, they replaced the uh, calibrate tune operate switch, and they had got a, or no, that was the uh, meter switch, the uh, the battery voltage grid plate current meter. Uh, that switch, uh, they replaced it and they put a you know they rewired it and they rewired it wrong <laughs> and so when you put it to PA grid uh, uh, weird things happen but uh, hey it was Sam what can you say uh, and let's see I'm telling you uh, the uh, the market right now for uh, some of this stuff is just uh, really in a transitional state. I mean, I don't know what the heck's going on. And the funny thing is, is uh, y you know, it's at, at ham swap meets. Uh, you go on to Eagle Bay, and some of the stuff does sell. And uh, some of it sells for some incredible prices. You know, just ask Ethan. And, uh, you know, not, nothing happens at the swap meets, but put it on eBay and, and look out. And, well, you know, the Breading 12 is kind of one of those that is nice to look at. And it's okay, you know, if you have one that, that works. And, of course, the one that, that I have that is a working one uh, belonged to old Rufus Adams down there in Carson Valley, uh, W7RTG. And uh, so it has a little local history, is why that's a particularly nice one. And uh, the HQ-129, I can't give them things away either. I got, I, I, I've got one here that has been to the swamp meets a lot. And it, it, it just doesn't, I mean, it doesn't pass the lift the lid and look. You know, that's about as far as it goes. Lift the lid, look, don't want it. And uh, so, yeah, I, I, we have, I have to check this out. It comes from KB6SCO, uh, that uh, Computer Corps here in Carson City will take this stuff. And, uh, you know, because it's electronics and that's what the salvage business is for them. And so they will take it. I don't know if that's true, but John has given a lot of stuff to Computer Corps. And then it does, uh, you know, it lives another life somehow. But uh, at any rate, yeah, it's pretty strange. On uh, the market of marketability at swap meets. And uh, so, uh, uh, projects here. We're still working on that high current uh, power supply to run the ATV Dynamotor. It's uh, coming along, it's almost ready to wire. You gotta wire that thing with 10 gauge wire, God. So anyway. I, I, I got to break out the uh, the soldering iron, and I mean iron. It's one of those big guys with the uh, with the the solder tip that's about the size of your thumb, and uh, that that'll wire, you know, that'll solder 10 gauge wires to uh, quarter 20 brass studs. So uh, 
that out of work. And uh, so anyway, that's the, uh, the rundown. I did acquire something that's kind of interesting, and uh, that is a very early, in fact, it's the earliest SX-28 FCC model. And uh, this is uh, uh, the 388th SX-28 made, 1940, in August. And it went to the RID, the Radio Intelligence Division, of the FCC, so uh, it's a very original. I, nothing's been done to it. It is, uh, it's impressive. It's a really, really uh, historic uh, piece. You know, George Sterling may have had his hands on this. You never know. And certainly, it rounded up a few Nazis, or at least fifth column types uh, that were around here. And so, anyway, that's uh, something that has been acquired recently. Let me turn it over to Dave, W6MQI, WA7YBS. All right, WA7YBS, W6MQI. Get a little pause there in case somebody wanted to squeak in there. Boy, a uh, small crew today. I almost didn't check in myself. Kind of went on a long bike ride yesterday. Barely get my carcass out of bed. I was so tired. But after a couple of cups of coffee, it kind of come, came alive here. Yeah, to concur on the market, I've had a set of Drake V-Line. Actually, they're in really good shape. The copper is in good shape. I've had it for sale since August. Not one bite. Usually somebody somewhere asked a question or something, but uh, yeah, nothing. And I was going to go to the... Uh, on swap meets, but uh, I got uh, gonna go quail hunting that weekend, so that's not gonna work. So I just kind of continue on with what I'm doing. But yeah, things have definitely changed. I don't know if it's because uh, people are just uh, the old farts or <laughs> we're all dying off, or uh, the economy. Maybe people are waiting to see what happens with the election. I don't know, but. Uh, even like the CW band, unless there's a contest, there's nobody on there hardly. In fact, I haven't been on, uh, I don't use even turn my radios on anymore, unless it's like a Sunday or something. That's my own, uh, that's my own weirdness. But, uh, yeah, even the local club here, they're different. I don't even, I don't, I don't belong to the local club. They seem like they're just into e-com computers and bike race communications. None of that really interests me, so I don't think any of them even know what a vacuum tube is. Projects. I took the uh, RAO5 off the bench. I'm getting kind of <laughs> disgusted. I don't know, man. It's got uh, that, that 60 cycle, 60 hertz hum. I know it's coming from the power supply. I'll be damned if I can figure out why. There's 18 volts of AC ripples on the power supply. Um, I've tried to uh, I've tested everything. Everything seems to be fine. I've tried to bypass things in there just to try and locate. I even disconnected the B plus and ran my own B plus power supply into it. But I couldn't get uh, couldn't get that to work. That was the oddest. I been scratching my head for a long time. Why I was getting the right voltages on the uh, audio tube plate and screen voltage, but the cathode voltage and grid voltages were not right at all. I couldn't figure out why, and I still don't know why. Yet if I hook up the B plus from the uh, you know the internal power supply, it all works. Of course, I have the hum, but if I disconnect the power supply and look at my own power supply, I can't get it to work. I don't know. <laughs> so I figured out i got to back away from this. But, uh, yeah, that's about all i got going here. This week, this month is pretty busy on the weekends. I don't think uh, this will probably be my last check-in for a while. It's, it's hunting season, so I'll be gone on the weekends. 
So then uh, November comes. Anyway, I'm babbling now. So anyway, um, that's about all I got going here. Not much. Um, go over to go over to Carla. What's going on there, Carla? W4 DBQ W6MQI. W6MQI, this is Whiskey Four Delta Victor, Quebec. Uh, not a whole lot yet for me. And good luck uh, on the hunting. Um, take your frustrations out on that. But um, let me see if there's anybody that would like to be number five and nine or get in on the tail end of the second round before we do the 73 round. Please come out if you're out there. W6TOM, W6TOM. Okay, W6TOM, Tom, good morning. Let me check real quick before I hand it to you, uh, see if anybody out there wants to be number six. Please come now. Okay, Tom, go ahead and make a transmission. And uh, hand it back up to me, W4DVQ. Go ahead, Tom. Yeah, this is W6TOM. I don't know if the end conditions are very good this morning. I'm not hearing you, Carl, very well at all. Henry was the strongest. Even Dave's not that strong. Anyway, I just thought I'd pop by and say good morning to everybody. It's been a while since I've been on. To tell you the truth, I don't like getting up this early on a Sunday morning. And I'm on modern equipment. Uh, my ART-13 and everything is very, so I'm only running like 25 watts a carrier. So anyway, W6TOM, back in that. Okay, W6TOM. Well, you, you sound good here. Um, you're a Q5. Um, okay, let me check one more time. Is there anybody else out there would like to check in on the tail end of the second round? Come out. Okay, nothing heard, so I'm going to hand it back up to the top. W7, this is W7MS, this is the 73 round, so go ahead, Mike. This is Whiskey 4, Delta Victor, Quebec. Well, thanks, Carla, W7MS. And good morning to W6TOM. It's been a long time since we've uh, heard his uh, voice coming through a speaker here at this location, but we did uh, have a chance to say hello and converse at the uh, Lincoln Swap Meet. Uh, and that was, uh, that was great to see Tom and a lot of the usual suspects, including his partner, Vern, was, uh, was right next door to the, in the selling spot. But good morning to you, Tom. Good signal into Reno, and hopefully uh, making the trip to uh, the East Bay this morning. And, uh, well, comments here. Uh, my gosh, uh, Henry's a busy guy between the power supply and uh, the arrival of the uh, SX-28 FCC slash RID. That's, uh, that's great, and uh, great to hear that it's in uh, unmolested condition. So congratulations on that. And I was joking, you were talking about SAMA, but of course there's the, uh, that Henry was talking about, but there's the, uh, there was the uh, Army equivalent, that's Toby Hanna Army Depot in, uh, in Pennsylvania. They were very good at destroying radios, especially uh, totally screen, screen up timing on uh, the R390 series of receivers. Uh, it was absolutely amazing. You think that, uh, <laughs> Was that sabotage or incompetence, or was it uh, after lunch and three beers? But uh, that was always my impression. But I'm sure uh, when they did good work, I, I wouldn't notice, but I certainly noticed when there were uh, deficiencies uh, when you were looking at a product of, uh, of a Toby Anna rebuild. So, uh, yeah, find a computer, computer core. I have heard John mention that before, and I was chuckling that maybe next year at uh, Brad Swap Meet, but of course, uh, I don't know if they're open on Saturdays, I can make a stop in Carson City and uh, do an offload, but that's uh, that's certainly a possibility. Yeah, fine on W7RPG, 
uh, in the Brenning 12. Yeah, we had mentioned uh, that in the past that I have his QSL card, and then you uh, were discussing the uh, the uh, estate barn sale that you uh, stumbled into, so good on that. And one comment on the Brenning 12 during its manhandling on its way to the uh, dump, since the uh, chrome chassis was in such poor, poor, posi poor condition, but the cabinet shifted, and I could see what the original chrome looked like, and it was like, wow, what a finish if you're uh, lucky enough to get something that's uh, in great condition and not affected by time and uh, humidity and maybe hamsters. Uh, could do looking forward to the power supply construction finish so you can officially uh, ATD on, uh, on dyno power on a motor generator. And uh, Project Sierra resumed a little bit of interest in my uh, power supply for the uh, Technical Material Corporation, the TMC uh, linear amplifier. I got uh, side side to swoggled with some uh, some issues with the uh, uh, plate transformer, uh, which was also supplying the uh, screen and bias voltages and et cetera, et cetera. When I discovered there was a deficiency in the uh, screen winding. <laughs> I, uh, uh, somewhat of a uh, leakage path to the uh, plate windings, which rendered the screen supply inoperative. But we've come up with a, uh, a certified hamster fix, and that's adding another transformer. So uh, we, we showed a little bit of interest on that yesterday. Uh, I decided to put it on hold for a while because I was just uh, kind of like uh, Dave and his RA05. I had to take some time off because. Uh, my, my Envision project had suddenly had to shift gears and I had to make some compromises, but uh, it will go. And uh, maybe Henry has some comments on the 60 hertz issues and the power supply, but uh, we'll be awaiting his uh, comments to uh, Dave. And with that, uh, seven threes from Reno. And it's always a pleasure, and thank you, Carla, for running the show. So uh, over to the uh, co-pilot. Over there in Dayton, Nevada, K0DWC, W7MS. Okay, Mike. Well, your, your signal was as strong as it was at the beginning, so uh, you're, you're coming in here real, real loud. Henry's real loud. Dave's about uh, S9. And good morning to Tom, W6TOM. Long time no here. Uh, glad you could join us this morning. I uh, wish the conditions were better for you over there, but your 25 watts is coming over here just fine. No problem at all. So uh, thanks for being with us this morning. 76 TOM, all right. So, uh, all right, guys, I'll, uh, I'll say my seven threes and uh, talk to you guys next week. And um, I will send it over to Henry, WA7YBS, A0. Go ahead, Henry. Okay, I paused there for a bit. I, I would have swore I heard Bill in there and 6BCT uh, trying to check in right at the uh, handoff from uh, Mike to Chuck. So uh, let me make a call and just make sure. Uh, N6BCT, N6BCT, are you uh, out there, Bill? Okay, Bill, I will uh, insert you uh, after uh, Tom, W6TOM, so you'll be number six, and Tom, turn it over to uh, N6 Bravo Tango Charlie, N6 BCT, Bravo Charlie Tango BCT. Uh, but anyway, uh, so yeah, you're recognized and picked up there, Bill, so good morning to you, and good morning to Tom. W6QM. Yeah, you got a good signal in here uh, into Dayton Valley. And so uh, for 25 watts, not bad. Yeah, you got a good antenna. So let's see. Uh, Dave on the RAO. It sounds a lot like the B minus is not floating, that it's, uh, that it's tied to chassis somehow. 
And if you look at this, maybe you've gone through this, but if you look at the schematic, you'll see the center tap of the transformer goes down and it's elevated above ground with a couple of uh, two watt resistors in parallel. I think they're 10K, but I'm not sure. Uh, off hand, maybe there are a thousand ohms. Anyway, uh, it's you know it's it's the usual uh, B minus type of deal. And of course, if you tie the B minus to chassis, and it may be inadvertent, it may have inadvertently been done on the original filter capacitors. Those are the uh, uh, those uh, four microfarad oil filled caps. Uh, the minus. Well, there really isn't a minus. They're paper capacitors, but let's assume there's two connections on there. Uh, those are not, neither one of those are tied to ground. And so if you replace the capacitor uh, that's inside there, the oil-filled paper capacitor with something, uh, and that's tied to ground, well, you know, then, then you've got the B minus tied to ground on there, which will induce uh, quite a bit of hum. And uh, so anyway, that's something to look at, especially if you've uh, replaced or rebuilt or did something with the, uh, those four microfarad. There's three of them in their uh, oil-filled uh, uh, filter capacitors because those are floating. And there's a, there's a big old lug that mounts underneath those on the top of the chassis and ties the cans, just the cans, to ground. The cans are not connected to anything on those capacitors, and I guess it was some sort of shielding or something they did. But at any rate, that that uh, those big lugs, there's three of them, they're tied together with uh, with TC wire, uh, and then uh, grounded. That isn't an electrical connection. That's just shielding. So anyway, some things to look at. Uh, but I'd run down the B minus, and somehow inadvertently, it might be connected to chassis. And uh, so, anyway, that's my two cents worth. I'll say 73. Thanks, everybody. And, uh, oh, by the way, Mike, uh, that was one of the good things about this breading 12 that came from old uh, Rufus Adams there, RPG, was it's, it had been in Nevada apparently since the 30s, and the chrome on it is perfect. I've never seen a breading. I uh, like that. Everyone I always see is like a, you know, pretty rusty. But uh, that one being, even if it was out in old Rufus Adams' barn, it was still on the east slope of the Sierra, so it was nice and dry. And uh, so, uh, anyway, the chrome on it is, is pretty, pretty spectacular. 73 all, and I'll be net control next week. So I hope everybody checks in and maybe a few more. So let me turn it over to Dave, W6MQI, and don't forget to pick up Bill, N6BCT there, Tom, uh, W6MQI, WA7YBS. All right, WA7YBS, W6MQI. Say good morning to uh, Tom and to Bill. And Henry, yeah, uh, I measured the, uh, between the, uh, the so-called B minus side and ground. I was seeing resistance there. It wasn't a direct short, but I was seeing some resistance there. Uh, that's kind of what I was thinking too. Somehow, I mean, B minus was connected, so I'm going to have to go through line by line, component by component, and see if maybe somehow. Not a direct connection right now. I can see that. And I don't remember those resistors on the schematic. I don't remember those resistors on the standard cap either. Uh, and, uh, but, uh, it's definitely stickier. Uh, you know, I I did replace those. Yeah. 
filter stroke, safe to stay old outright, transformer uh, transformer old outright and everything. So it's gotta be at least at the B minus connected somewhere and I I don't know where it's at, where it's at. So I had to I had to back away from it. <laughs> you gotta get that way sometimes you get frustrated. It's better just to back away and come back and say, Ah, oh, that's what it was. So that's where I'm at right now. But uh 73 guys, I probably won't see any be back on here till November. Like I said, I'll be gone. I got a, every weekend I got something going on. A multi-day trip. So again, 73 guys. And over to Tom, and you're sounding good here in Livermore with your 25 watts. Got the uh, nice audio and such, uh, Tom. So over to you, W6TOM, W6MQI. Uh, W6MQI, W6TOM. You're sounding pretty good here too, Dave. I don't have a whole heck of a lot to say. I mean, my hand stuff has mainly been playing around with my whisper beacons. Uh, let me break in there and uh, send it over to Bill, N6BCT. Go ahead and make a transmission, Bill, and turn it to Carla, W4DVQ. Sorry, I got tongue-tied there. <clears throat> well, 73s to everybody. And Dave, um, last week I had tore my sewing machine, the bottom of my sewing machine apart. I know it has nothing to do with radio. And could not get that sucker back together. And I had to walk away, and I went to bed, and the next morning while I was drinking coffee, I put it together like, like nothing. And I, I, I just did it. But anyhow, I just thought I'd throw that in there. And thank you, Henry, <coughs> for picking Bill up for me. Um, I appreciate that. And um, I guess, uh, guys, thanks for being there. And I'm going to close the net down. So this is Whiskey 4, Delta Victor, Quebec. And I'm securing the Vintage Military Radio Net for Sunday, for today. I would like to thank everyone for participating and invite you back next next Sunday morning and where Henry will be net control. So thank you guys and I'll be turning this frequency back over to regular amateur radio. So thank you please. Have a good day. Bye. Well, thanks, Carla, for running the show. We can certainly tell the coffee has taken effect here, so I'm glad to know that you're wide awake, W7MS. 